Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 27th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A common theme in recent breaches was exposed cloud resources, whether it was a badly secured S3 bucket or whether it was some server that wasn't configured correctly. But one thing people are really struggling with is sort of keeping track of all the resources they're pushing in the cloud. And that's why I want to highlight two interesting tools that hopefully hopefully will make this a little bit easier. The first one I think is a little bit on the dark side of the gray head scale, but the AWS bucket dump allows you to sort of brute force AWS bucket names. So what you would do is you would find a list of terms that are likely used in your company for AWS bucket names and then try to enumerate them and see if any of these buckets exist and if they are not properly properly protected. The tool also allows you to download files that match certain interesting keywords. That's of course where things definitely get a little bit interesting from sort of an ethics and legal point of view. If you by mistake end up in a bucket that you are not authorized to read. The second tool Cloud Mapper comes courtesy of Duo Labs and it allows you to draw pretty nice network diagrams for assets in Amazon web services. Now this is clearly a white hat tool in that you first need access to the account. So you do need the credentials for a specific AWS account. And then you let a shell script collect all the information from the AWS account. And this is then converted into an HTML file that is viewable in your browser. Of course, unlike the first tool, uh, this doesn't really track any sort of uh, shadow IT assets. Uh, these are assets that someone may have de deployed without officially sort of registering them by, for example, setting up their own AWS account. Now, this is certainly a hot topic. So if you have any tools that you like that sort of help you manage and uh, these cloud assets and also find cloud assets that may have been deployed without authorization. Uh, let me know and uh, maybe in the future I can uh, put a little diary together listing some of these uh, tools. And apparently some users are still surprised by the anti-theft and find my Mac feature in OS 10 laptops and desktops. In iOS, this feature is a little bit more obvious and you pretty much cannot use a phone unless you associate it with your iCloud account. In OS 10, you sort of can get away without ever registering and linking your system to a particular iCloud account, which may mean if you bought the system secondhand that the old user's account is still associated with the system. And then of course, the old user may still be able to track your whereabouts. So if you buy a new system, make sure that not only is the operating system installed from scratch, but also that the old iCloud account is no longer associated with the system. And sticking with Apple here for one more story, Apple announced that for security reasons, it will stop supporting iTunes store availability for Windows XP or Vista, as well as for the first generation Apple TV. This will become effective end of May. Now they don't really specify here why they're doing this or what the security reason is, but my guess is it's uh, well a TLS 1.0 that I mentioned earlier uh, this week. Apple's iTunes store, of course, deals with credit card numbers. So I suspect uh, they have to comply with a PCI, which will depreciate and no longer allow TLS 1.0 as of end of June. So they're giving themselves here uh, one month uh, to actually comply with a PCI. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.